the Bible, and the Catechism, in a year. Day 36 From the Book of Exodus And the Lord said to Moses, See, I make you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron your brother shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you, and Aaron your brother shall tell Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go out of his land. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and though I multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, Pharaoh will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth my hosts, my people the sons of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great acts of judgment. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the people of Israel from among them. And Moses and Aaron did so, they did as the Lord commanded them. Now Moses was eighty years old, and Aaron eighty-three years old, when they spoke to Pharaoh. Aaron's Miraculous Rod And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, Prove yourselves by working a miracle, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your rod and cast it down before Pharaoh, that it may become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did as the Lord commanded, Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh summoned the wise men and the sorcerers, and they also, the magicians of Egypt, did the same by their secret arts. For every man cast down his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Still Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them, as the Lord had said. The first plague, water turned to blood. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened, he refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning, as he is going out to the water, wait for him by the river's brink, and take in your hand the rod which was turned into a serpent. And you shall say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness, and behold, you have not yet obeyed. Thus says the Lord, By this you shall know that I am the Lord, behold, I will strike the water that is in the Nile with the rod that is in my hand, and it shall be turned to blood, and the fish in the Nile shall die, and the Nile shall become foul, and the Egyptians will loathe to drink water from the Nile. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your rod and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their rivers, their canals, and their ponds, and all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and there shall be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded, in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants, he lifted up the rod and struck the water that was in the Nile, and all the water that was in the Nile turned to blood. And the fish in the Nile died, and the Nile became foul, so that the Egyptians could not drink water from the Nile, and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. But the magicians of Egypt did the same by their secret arts, so Pharaoh's heart remained hardened, and he would not listen to them, as the Lord had said. Pharaoh turned and went into his house, and he did not lay even this to heart. And all the Egyptians dug round about the Nile for water to drink, for they could not drink the water of the Nile. The Second Plague, Frogs Seven days passed after the Lord had struck the Nile. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will plague all your country with frogs, the Nile shall swarm with frogs which shall come up into your house, and into your bedchamber and on your bed, and into the houses of your servants and of your people, and into your ovens and your kneading bowls, the frogs shall come up on you and on your people and on all your servants. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your hand with your rod over the rivers, over the canals, and over the pools, and cause frogs to come upon the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. But the magicians did the same by their secret arts, and brought frogs upon the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron, and said, Entreat the Lord to take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, Be pleased to command me when I am to entreat, for you and for your servants and for your people, that the frogs be destroyed from you and your houses and be left only in the Nile. And he said to Morrow. Moses said, Be it as you say, that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. The frogs shall depart from you and your houses and your servants and your people, they shall be left only in the Nile. So Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, 
and Moses cried to the Lord concerning the frogs, as he had agreed with Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, the frogs died out of the houses and courtyards and out of the fields. And they gathered them together in heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was a respite, he hardened his heart, and would not listen to them, as the Lord had said. The Third Plague, Gnats Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your rod and strike the dust of the earth, that it may become gnats throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so, Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod, and struck the dust of the earth, and there came gnats on man and beast, all the dust of the earth became gnats throughout all the land of Egypt. The magicians tried by their secret arts to bring forth gnats, but they could not. So there were gnats on man and beast. And the magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them, as the Lord had said. The Fourth Plague, Flies Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and wait for Pharaoh, as he goes out to the water, and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants and your people, and into your houses, and the houses of the Egyptians shall be filled with swarms of flies, and also the ground on which they stand. But on that day I will set apart the land of Goshen, where my people dwell, so that no swarms of flies shall be there, that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Thus I will put a division between my people and your people. By tomorrow shall this sign be. And the Lord did so, there came great swarms of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses, and in all the land of Egypt the land was ruined by reason of the flies. Then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron, and said, Go, sacrifice to your God within the land. But Moses said, It would not be right to do so, for we shall sacrifice to the Lord our God offerings abominable to the Egyptians. If we sacrifice offerings abominable to the Egyptians before their eyes, will they not stone us? We must go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as He will command us. So Pharaoh said, I will let you go, to sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only you shall not go very far away. Make entreaty for me. Then Moses said, Behold, I am going out from you and I will pray to the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people, tomorrow, only let not Pharaoh deal falsely again by not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord, and the Lord did as Moses asked, and removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people, not one remained. But Pharaoh hardened his heart this time also, and did not let the people go. From the Book of Psalms Prayer for Deliverance from Enemies A Psalm of David Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler. And rise for my help. Draw the spear and javelin. Against my pursuers. Say to my soul. I am your deliverance. Let them be put to shame and dishonor, who seek after my life. Let them be turned back and confounded, who devise evil against me. Let them be like chaff before the wind, with the angel of the Lord driving them on. Let their way be dark and slippery, with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. For without cause they hid their net for me. Without cause they dug a pit for my life. Let ruin come upon them unawares and let the net which they hid ensnare them. Let them fall therein to ruin. Then my soul shall rejoice in the Lord, exulting in His deliverance. All my bones shall say, O Lord, who is like Thee, Thou who deliverest the weak, from him who is too strong for him, the weak and needy from him who despoils him? Malicious witnesses rise up. They ask me of things that I know not. They requite me evil for good my soul is forlorn. But I, when they were sick, I wore sackcloth. I afflicted myself with fasting. I prayed with head bowed on my bosom, as though I grieved for my friend or my brother. I went about as one who laments his mother, bowed down and in mourning. But at my stumbling they gathered in glee, 
they gathered together against me. Cripples whom I knew not. Slandered me without ceasing. They impiously mocked more and more. Gnashing at me with their teeth. How long, O Lord, wilt thou look on? Rescue me from their ravages. My life from the lions. Then I will thank thee in the great congregation. In the mighty throng I will praise thee. Let not those rejoice over me, who are wrongfully my foes. And let not those wink the eye, who hate me without cause. For they do not speak peace. But against those who are quiet in the land, they conceive words of deceit. They open wide their mouths against me. They say, Aha, aha. Our eyes have seen it. Thou hast seen, O Lord, be not silent. O Lord, be not far from me. Bestir thyself, and awake for my right, for my cause, my God and my Lord. Vindicate me, O Lord, my God, according to thy righteousness. And let them not rejoice over me. Let them not say to themselves, Aha, we have our heart's desire. Let them not say, We have swallowed him up. Let them be put to shame and confusion altogether, who rejoice at my calamity. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor, who magnify themselves against me. Let those who desire my vindication, shout for joy and be glad, and say evermore, Great is the Lord, who delights in the welfare of his servant. Then my tongue shall tell of thy righteousness, and of thy praise all the day long. From the Gospel of Matthew The Laborers in the Vineyard For the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and to them he said, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing, and he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last, up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it they grumbled at the householder, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong, did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you, and go, I choose to give to this last as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. From the Catechism Creation, Work of the Holy Trinity In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, three things are affirmed in these first words of Scripture, the eternal God gave a beginning to all that exists outside of Himself, He alone is Creator, the verb create, Hebrew bara, always has God for its subject. The totality of what exists, expressed by the formula the heavens and the earth, depends on the one who gives it being. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. The New Testament reveals that God created everything by the eternal Word, His beloved Son. In Him all things were created, in heaven and on earth. All things were created through Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. The Church's faith likewise confesses the creative action of the Holy Spirit, the Giver of Life, the Creator Spirit, Veni, Creator Spiritus, the Source of Every Good. The Old Testament suggests and the New Covenant reveals the creative action of the Son and the Spirit, inseparably one with that of the Father. This creative cooperation is clearly affirmed in the Church's rule of faith, there exists but one God. He is the Father, God, the Creator, the Author, the Giver of Order. He made all things by Himself, that is, by His Word and by His Wisdom, by the Son and the Spirit who, so to speak, are His hands. Creation is the common work of the Holy Trinity. 
The world was created for the glory of God. Scripture and tradition never cease to teach and celebrate this fundamental truth, the world was made for the glory of God. St. Bonaventure explains that God created all things not to increase His glory, but to show it forth and to communicate it, for God has no other reason for creating than His love and goodness, creatures came into existence when the key of love opened His hand. The First Vatican Council explains. This one, true God, of His own goodness and almighty power, not for increasing His own beatitude, nor for attaining His perfection, but in order to manifest this perfection through the benefits which He bestows on creatures, with absolute freedom of counsel and from the beginning of time, made out of nothing both orders of creatures, the spiritual and the corporeal. The glory of God consists in the realization of this manifestation and communication of His goodness, for which the world was created. God made us to be His sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace, for the glory of God is man fully alive, moreover man's life is the vision of God, if God's revelation through creation has already obtained life for all the beings that dwell on earth, how much more will the words manifestation of the Father obtain life for those who see God? The ultimate purpose of creation is that God who is the creator of all things may at last become all in all, thus simultaneously assuring His own glory and our beatitude.